Now our programs are sponsored by Fieldstone Memory Care of Bainbridge Island. Fieldstone offers innovative and compassionate care and they are accepting residents. To schedule a tour of Fieldstone's beautifully appointed facilities, call 360-271-2530. Hi, Katie. Hey, Reed. Oh, it's so exciting to be here and Happy New Year, everybody. This is our January program and I'm excited to be um, starting off with this uh, conversation with Clarence Morawaki and with Brenda Freud Johnson. And before we get started, um, I'd like to acknowledge that we are on Suquamish territory. We begin um, by um, acknowledging that we're on the ancestral territory of this Suquamish people. Expert fishermen, canoe builders, basket weavers, the Suquamish people, they live in harmony with the waterways along Washington's Central Salish Sea as they have for thousands of years. Um, here, the Suquamish people live and protect the lands um, and waters of their ancestors for future generations. And I was feeling like today I wanted to just acknowledge the that um, the Suquamish people were, of course, the original environmentalists. They knew how to work and protect this land. So um, I would like to um, thank Reed for uh, hosting these programs. The um, Bainbridge Island Senior Center is such a great, great partner with this. We do them every second Wednesday of the month. And we do them so that uh, in, in hopes that people will be able to see who's on the island, what the island's about, and feel like they belong to the island and be able to um, learn about people on the island. It started as an oral history program. Um, and now what we're doing is we're talking to people uh, about their experiences um, from their history till today. And um, making history uh, is Clarence Morawaki and Brenda Fantroy Johnson. They are on the city council. And I was very excited to invite them just because I happen to know each, I happen to have the privilege of knowing each of them and knowing that um, it was not necessarily their idea when they were growing up. I'm going to be the council on the council for Bainbridge Island. And even if uh, somebody might think they might be on the council for Bainbridge Island, it wasn't quite the timing to do it. And so in order for us to have the privilege of having them as our council members, um, there was a lot of encouragement and support that happened. So I wanted to hear some of that story. But I'll start with, um, how about if you do some self-introduction? We just want to hear a little bit about each one of you. So how about if I start with Brenda, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, thank you, Katie and Reed and all of the other members of the Senior Center for inviting us here. Um, Katie always tries to make us feel really comfortable and as if this is a regular conversation and eventually I'll get into that mode, <laughs> but I'm not there yet. So um, I am Brenda Fantroy Johnson and I currently serve uh, on the city council for the North Ward District 2 for Bainbridge Island. Um, I am also a mother of three adult children uh, one lives in um, Port Ludlow and the other two are in Detroit, Michigan. I have four grandchildren, one dog and one adopted cat. Um, <laughs> and yes, I live on Bainbridge Island. I'm on the north end. I'm up near the bridge. My house is the last left before you go off the island. Um, I have a full-time job. I actually have two full-time jobs along with um, the city council job. So I'm quite busy and I'm quite active in the community. Um, and I'm glad to say 
that I will be the new liaison for the senior center. So that's going to be exciting. I'm, I'm glad to uh, work closer with you guys and, and hopefully, um, you know, because I am a senior and I'm proud of it. <laughs> and so I'm just hoping to get that underway um, and I'm hoping everything goes well. So I will turn it to Clarence now. Thank you. Thanks, Brenda. And I'm a senior too, and um, I'm proud of it. And been a member of the Senior Center before I got my Medicare card, so I told you how excited I was to be a senior. Uh, I'm Clarence Moriwaki. I just was elected to the Central Ward, 5th District. And uh, I grew up in Moses Lake, Washington, which is in Eastern Washington. I'm a third generation Washingtonian. Uh, my, my father's father came to our state around 1910, 1920, 19, 1910, 1912, somewhere in that area. And uh, um, been living in a state other than a short stint in Portland, Oregon, working for the White House. I've always been living in Washington State. Moved to Bainbridge Island about 23 years ago, uh, December 12th, December 26th, 1977, 1977. So um, I've been here quite a while and I've been involved in the community. Uh, first got here and was invited to join um, the uh, Bainbridge Island Japanese American community. And I love that story because that was back in the day when we had phone books. And um, he said, Matsudaira, when you had a phone book, you had the first name on the page and the last name on the page would be in the upper corner. You guys remember that? And so I was the last person <laughs> on the page. So when you open up right there, Mori Waki on the upper right corner. And so she gave me a cold call and said, we have this group. Would you like to come and visit? And that's how it started. Um, I've been involved with the Japanese American community and, and the Japanese American Inclusion Memorial. Um, and now I was elected to the city council. So really quickly, shorthand there. Great. That's such a great story. And I, I remember specifically as a member of BIJAC, uh, kind of the transition of people saying, well, you can't just do that anymore <laughs> to find the people of Japanese descent on the island, you know, because last names are all over the place. So that's a great, a great story. Thank you. So I was wondering, um, Brenda, would you share how, um, how you ended up on Bainbridge Island and was the West Coast where you always wanted to be or? No, I had never been to the West Coast. Um, I, back in 2013, I was um, working for the state of Michigan and my field is information security. Sorry. Come on, Kitty. Kitty. Yeah. She wants to climb across, but I'm, I'm blocking her. <laughs> um, and so I was working for the state of Michigan and I kind of had reached a plateau. And uh, my husband said, well, you know, I'm a salesman and I can work anywhere in the country. Why don't you put yourself out there and see if, you know, someone is looking for someone like you. Mm -hmm. I had just gotten my master's degree and had just gotten certified in information security. And um, so I put my name out on monster.com. I think it was monster, one of the older ones. <laughs> and um, I got picked up um, to, to go work in Ohio. And so, you know, I was new to the whole um, moving around and employment kind of thing. I had worked for the state for 17 years. Detroit's a union town and you stay there until you die. Um, and so, you know, my first big move out was to Ohio, which wasn't far. I stayed there six months and um, then I got recruited to come work for Nordstrom's. Nordstrom's was looking for um, minorities, actually. Um, African-American women was a plus, you know. And so uh, I, I suspect there weren't that many out here. Mm -hmm because they gobbled me right up, you know, and uh, they moved me out here um, and moved all of my, you know, things, my, all of my furniture and everything and put me up in um, Belltown. I was there for six months and it took quite a while to find some place to live. This was, you know, it was a time where housing was still as expensive as it is now. And um, so I ended up in Belltown for six months and then found a rental here on the island on Falk Road. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, 
The first time I came here, it was very rainy. And I said, you know, I don't think I'll ever go back to that place. And that was, you know, before I came out for the interview, I had no idea that one day I would end up living here and loving the rain as much as I love the sun because you can't have one without the other. Um, and so, you know, I stayed at Nordstrom for a year actually and moved on to Singular Wireless and uh, AT&T bought them. And I've been there now 15 years. Wow, wow, that's a, quite the journey. Yeah. Oh, and so, um, I'm just curious, so how the connection that there was a rental on Bainbridge, was that just in the paper or what, someone you were working with? No, it actually was. It was in the Bainbridge. It was in a flyer that I found at the ferry. <laughs> and I looked through it and it had rentals. It had all kinds of rentals. Um, mm -hmm. There was this huge house on Day Road that, um, not Day Road, on um Oh, I can't think of the road now, but it, it had seven bedrooms and it was for rent for $1,000 a month. And I almost got that one because I, I envisioned that I was going to bring all my family out, <laughs> you know, and my husband said, no, that's too big. Don't get that. I mean, there were places everywhere. Downtown, there were rentals and, you know, so I was really fortunate when, by the time I came here to find those. And, and it was well, a great little rental house in the woods. It was just me and the raccoons. <laughs> well, we're really lucky that that's, that that was the case. We're thankful for that flyer there. <laughs> and then um, Clarence, I was just wondering you too, like how did it, how was it Bainbridge that you landed here? Well, um, I started, what brought me back to Seattle I was in Portland, I mentioned for the Rosa, I mean, the, uh, White House, and when that office closed, I was one of the first post people at Sound Transit, hired in '97, and um, I was looking for a place. I was, it was a, not a good situation. I couldn't know where to go right away because the hiring was so quick. So I was living in the basement of an ex-girlfriend in Magnolia, oh, um, and I wanted out of there. So a lot of my uh, colleagues at Sound Transit lived here, and they said, uh, "Why don't you check it out?" So it was actually this weekend. This coming weekend, it was Martin Luther King Jr. weekend, um, where I had a three-day weekend, and so I just rode the ferry, and they said, um, walk off the ferry and keep walking, and if you think you walk too far, you don't want to live there. So that was my radius of how to uh, find a place. I just went to the first place to eat, Streamliner <laughs> Diner, and there was colleagues of mine that I used to work with in the state senate sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is another thing. And then I turned and walked down the street where the key Bainbridge apartments were. And I just happened to catch the manager who was leaving. And he said, I've got a unit, but we can't open it up. You can go walk around where it is. And it was the townhouse closest to where now the, what do you call it, the rowing center. And, you know, closest to the senior center, actually, on Bajoon. And I said, I'll take it. I never looked inside. Um, nothing. I just uh, took it and I lived there for quite a while. Um, and that's how I, that's why I moved here. Wow. I love, I love those, they're, you know, like origin stories. I love these, love these stories. Andy, I have to correct the date. I came out here in 2006. I think okay. Was, yeah, 2006. Okay. I was, I, I that's, that's good because my little brain was going, oh, I thought it was <laughs> earlier, so. So um, then I, I mentioned just to, like Brenda said, just to warm us up and things, I, I was wanting to um, ask what, what are some of the things, and you already shared some, that are um, things you really love about living on Bainbridge in terms of the, the place to live? Like what are some things that you appreciate? Maybe three things that you appreciate when, about what you live here. Well, for me, I love seeing the little kids. <laughs> you know, um, I was talking, I can't remember who I was talking with, someone on the phone. Oh, I know it was the city manager and he, he has a good view out to Winslow Way. And I mean, out to Madison. And he saw a mother who was in the rain <laughs> and she had a stroller. <laughs> And she was trying to get the little kid in the stroller and they had on their yellow, you know, 
their yellow boots and their, their yellow raincoat. And I could just picture that because one little kid was having a fit, didn't want to get in the stroller. And I, you know, if you if you just drive down Madison or Winslow Way, you see how happy-go-lucky these little kids are and they're just running around. And so I love that. Okay, I love mm -hmm. that. I also love that I'm able to live in a place where there's so much water. I've always mm -hmm. lived by the water. Even in Detroit, I lived by the river. And um, my favorite part about that is sitting right here in my office, looking out at Agate Pass. And mm -hmm. if, the, if it wasn't rainy and cloudy, seeing all of the snow that's now on the mountain, you know. Mm -hmm. And I love the people. The people here mm -hmm. are, I have great community here. And, um, you know, you, you just can't, it's, it's small town. And that's why no matter where I go, I know at least four or five people, whether it's in TNC or at the ferry, uh, on the ferry, I'm forever seeing people that I know. And it's, it's the friends that, you know, I wanted to have when I was a teenager, you know, I got all that now and I don't have to worry about having any friends. So. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I'm uh, someone who popped on early was uh, your friend, um, uh, Veronica. And I just learned this morning because her husband dropped by the, the historical museum that you and she climbed were climbers together. Yes, we did. We have seen each other for a long time because it's COVID. <laughs> There she is. <laughs> yes, she made it up to the top of Rainier, and I made it to that uh, De disappointment cleaver, aptly named. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So, um, Clarence, what are your three pick top picks uh, for today? I know it's hard because we have lots of picks, but for today, what comes to mind and. Your favorite. It's kind of segueing a lot of things that, that Brenda said, but first I'm just looking, I, it's nice to see all these familiar faces on this wall here. Um, hi all. And um, uh, I think what Brenda was trying to articulate was, you know, this, this small town, the character of our community, it, it really has an identity. So I like the quality of life and everything that surrounds what um, a lot of places would envy having a downtown core that has this character and has some history in it. Um, so I really love that. And I think that's why we're such an attractive place to live and work and play because we have all those qualities. I also like, and that also brings in the, the tight knit community, um, the support like the senior center, but the non, not, they call them non-government organizations, nonprofits are so robust on Bainbridge. Um, I, I was on the Tuckwell City Council. I should have said this during the campaign. I was on the city council, finishing a term on city council before Bainbridge Island was a city. And it was a different place. They're totally different cities. Um, Bain, Tukwila has the two major freeways, 405 and I-5, making our city into four quadrants. It's like a bullseye right in the middle of town. But it also meant that we had incredible revenues. But the flip side was, it was about 65% the multifamily and the rest uh, single family. And it was mostly, there was only about 15% covered area. That's when I came up with the sensitive areas ordinance because that's about what we had left. Here on Bainbridge, it's just the opposite. I mean, it's 85% forest, farmlands, open spaces, and 15% is developed in homes. And that again is a, is a yeah, other, other communities are dying to have that kind of uh, open spaces and the trees for, you know, uh, carbon sequestration and, and all of that. So, you know, we're, there, there's just a lot of magic stuff that works really well here. And then the final thing, and most of you know this is, you know, I was, involved with the Japanese American community and the legacy of this community and how they stood by their friends and neighbors and the you know, editorial courage of the Woodwards and you, know, you guys know all that story. That is remarkable and made me feel welcome here before I got here because I knew of that story through college and I mean Bainbridge Island was legendary so that as, an, as a Japanese American made me feel really welcome and the community really embraced me um, wonderfully uh, so that part is irreplaceable. Thank you. That's great. So um, I was wondering, uh, I, I'm, I am curious about that. Uh, how do you get approached when it's not your aspiration to be 
um, you know, engaged in in the work of the city politics and stuff. I'm just wondering who who and how, if you're willing to share, was the 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 person that approached you and maybe the team that kind of how did they convince you, you know? Well, I can go first with that. I was just thinking when you when you said that it was like um, you know, I I guess I had been here over 10 years before I got involved with anything, right? And <laughs> You know, like most of the people, um, African-American people around here, everyone knows Karen Vargas, Akue is, is her given name there. And, you know, I, I, I have a lot of friends on Bainbridge, I really do, and the surrounding um, area. But I did not have a lot of African-American friends because there's not a lot of African-Americans here, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I had tried to get dialed into the Bremerton community and through Karen, and that's how I met her. Um, and she introduced me to some people. And so one day, you know, I got a call from her and she said, come down to the city council because there's some racial issues going on on Bainbridge. And we're down here to let the city council know. Mm -hmm. And I came down and, you know, she's, she's kind of, she's small, but she's mighty. <laughs> and um, so she told me, she said, sign your name on this paper. And I did. And next thing I know, I'm being called up to speak. Right? And it turns out that there had been some graffiti, some swashnikas painted on the yoga house and um, there had been other racial issues. And so that's how I got, you know, I guess tuned in to the issues. Um, of course, I had experienced uh, some racism myself and that's what I got up and spoke about was what I had experienced. And, um, you know, we find that through storytelling, there were so many people there that day that got up and told their stories that the city council decided to create a race equity task force. And, you know, that just set the ball rolling. I put my name in to be a part of the task force, was interviewed for that and selected. And I served on the task force for two years. Um, and, you know, we got a lot of things done. We found out there were a lot of things that needed to be done. Um, and during the course of that, uh, Cole Medina vacated his position. And it was uh, a couple of the council members, Joe Dietz and Leslie Snyder, who asked me if I would be interested that I should put my hat in the ring. And I, you know, I never thought that, I didn't even discuss it with my husband to tell you how. <laughs> It was just like, okay, because I'm a, I'm a firm believer that when, if you, if you know my life story, you know that I have a great faith and, mm -hmm. and a higher power. And I'm a firm believer that when he puts it in front of me, I have to do it. It's an opportunity for mm -hmm. me to do a couple of things. One is to overcome a lot of fear that I've had in my life around authority figures and public speaking and all of that. And it turns out I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> I like talking, as you can see. I like talking to people. And so it was put in front of me and I didn't really realize all of the ramifications that was surrounding it. It turned into not a not so pleasant <laughs> Thing. You know, there was a lot of controversy around me being appointed to that position. Uh, there were newspaper stories. There were, um, you know, it, it just wasn't very pleasant. But, um, you know, I did what I always do. I prayed and I persevered. And I actually went out to Ocean Shores <laughs> and just stayed on the beach and let the controversy swirl around me. I did not have mm -hmm. to get involved in it. Um, and it turned out okay. Um, and what I found mm -hmm. out was that there's a lot of things happening on this island that I need to be involved in, that I need to represent for not only people of color, but for all ethnicities. 
Um, we need to make sure that the money that we spend is being spent on everybody. And that's, that's the reason why I stay there is to make sure that everybody's represented. That's, that's great. That's great. I don't know how many um, people have read Jonathan Livington Siegel, but that he was called like the, you know, reluctant Messiah or something like that, you know, and I don't mean it like a Messiah thing, but this whole thing of being called into leadership that way is just so, you know, powerful. And, um, and it reminds me as well as um, I know um, uh, pipe carriers in the Lakota tribe, if you're, if you're a pipe carrier, uh, if someone asks for a ceremony, you, you know, basically that means it was meant to happen. So you, it's not your choice in a way. And it sounds, that sounds similar. So um, thanks, Karen Vargas, Akuye. <laughs> who were actually celebrating uh, tomorrow night because she got the governor's award for um, arts and humanities. It's a luminary award. So if you guys, if anybody's curious, we could maybe put that in the chat. So, um, and so Clarence, uh, let's see what was happening in your life. And, and um, I mean, I think, you know, as someone who is very, um, uh, influential and on the island and a wonderful scene leader, the city council, you know, makes sense, but it wasn't quite your timing from what I understand. And so I'm wondering how, how did it happen that you were kind of nudged into it? <laughs> well, before we get into that, and we had this last conversation, you, you mentioned Jonathan Livingston Seagull. So I have the really fancy version <laughs> here. And it, this is the cover, uh, you know, and here's the book. So yeah, I'm familiar with that book. <laughs> um, well, I, you know, I mentioned I moved here 23 years ago and it's probably been about 22 years when the first person asked me to run for city council. And periodically people ask me that, have been asking me that ever since. And I always had one simple response. Wait, you want me to run for the Bainbridge Island city council? I thought you liked me. Um, <laughs> And, and it was a, a thing that I, you know, I just wasn't that interested at that time because I was far more focused on the memorial project and other issues here on the island in that regard. So I wasn't going to get into the political, and I have been that. I mean, you mentioned on the city council and worked at all different levels of government, so I'm familiar with that, but it wasn't something I wanted. And um, this year, la last year, um, Leslie Scheider was the first person to approach me and really, really encouraged me. And it was at the uh, um, gathering at uh, the waterfront when, when it was the Race Equity Advisory Committee holding that that uh, rally there. And I impromptu spoke, so people asked me if she came up to me afterwards. Uh, but I was pretty busy. I had a, um, it, it was a really rough year uh, last year. Um, I had a long time friend I've known for 20 years. I saved his life in 2011. Um, at heart attack, four minutes of CPR, two double fibrillations, flew him to Harborview. Then I stayed in Harborview for a week and, and then tried to get him. Anyway, uh, he, he, he uh, you may have known him. Jack Aarons was this elector who announced in Olympia that he publicly uh, was terminal and you know, became an international scorer. Anyway, I was is uh, one of his best friends, um, executive of the state, and uh, you know he was dying. Um, so the the timing seemed I, I couldn't do it. I mean, I thought I've got this responsibility, and I um, the week of filing, I wasn't considering it at all. But I got in Wednesday was encouraged by many leaders in the community, some of them on this call here, that said, you know, really please run, please run, and. Uh, I talked to him first. I talked to Jack first and said, you know, but man, you know, and he, he said, Clarence, you, you, you saved my life 10 years ago and you give me 10 years, you know, this is something you should do. You know, you've given enough to do enough. Um, so I did file, um, mm -hmm. but it was hard. Yeah. And the hardest part was during the process when he was taken to the hospital and, and I was there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And it was the only week was the only League of Women Voters um, candidates for him. 
-hmm. and my own campaign kickoff is going to be that Friday and I'll cancel them both. Um, no regrets on that, but it was, a, mm -hmm. it was, it, it's been, an, this, this campaign was an ordeal to uh, take care of because I had so much on that personal side, but um, it's been a positive experience because of the overwhelming support and, and encouragement from many of you on this call here and, and around the community. And that, that's been really reaffirming. And it mm -hmm. showed that I think I made the right decision when I decided to come over here on Martin Luther King, 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 Martin Luther King <laughs> Jr. weekend and, and walk around and didn't walk too far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, what I'm, what I'm curious about too is I worry, you know, I, I'm a little cynical when it comes to politics. And so uh, because I am very um, invested in equity and um, I, I just have a worry that, that you have all this support to get you in there, you know, and will you have enough support, both of you, you know, um, because it is a tough job, uh, to, um, you know, to maintain because it is so challenging. And so I, I just wanted your reflection on, um, where uh, where you feel like where you feel supported and what particular things uh, would feel like support from folks for you personally and I because when we we did this call I'm like okay you guys it's not a political thing I'm not talking about your Candace you know your anything like that but from a personal Bainbridge Island uh, individual that's representing the island what are some of the things that you know people will do for you or that that you know will support you or are you concerned about that political okay i voted for you check the box turn away i don't know if either one of you have a comment on that i can jump in first if that's okay brenda sure yeah um just uh had my first meeting last night and i they showed my swearing in from the 22nd December 22nd and gave us a chance to talk and, and the first thing I said was the first thing I said at my swearing in was well I, I I'm sworn in and, and all of you have just witnessed history because I'm the first Asian American to be elected on Bainbridge Island. Uh, Junko Harui was on the Winslow City Council but he was appointed like Brenda was had a two-year term but he unlike Brenda he chose not to do election he he said um, it was bad for business for him to go run for office. Um, but that is that is uh, historic, and it's uh, it's something that should be celebrated. But also of note was that uh, my race, the Central Ward, um, no matter who won, we were guaranteed to have a minority or a person of color. I mean, Rasham and Sal and I were free people, uh, uh, not, certainly not part of the ninety percent white people here. And so that race in itself was historic because there was no not a white person on the ballot in our race. And then it was guaranteed, of course, that one of us, a, pers a minority, a, a person of color, would be representing the city council. So it was kind of remarkable that was unremarkable in that yeah. no one's really made a point of that. I pointed mm -hmm. out to people and they go, wow, that's, that's right. And I think in a positive way, that's good because I, I believe most people weren't looking at race. Most people were looking at, you know, issues and, and stands on positions and and our demeanor and all those kind of character things. They weren't looking at our, our skin or our heritage. So that, I think that's a little bit of progress. I'm always trying to be half glass, half full. Um, but along with that comes huge responsibility because um, both Brenda and I carry a weight of just because of our appearances and because of our heritage. We represent our community just de facto because we are part of that community. And so we are aware, I, I'm not, sorry, I'm not trying to speak for you, Brenda, but um, I think we're both aware that um, people look at us that way. I know it's like, we both know what it's like to walk into a store and, and people look at us a certain way. Um, I've been accosted these last couple of years because of freaking Kung flu, China virus, former insurrectionist in chief uh, spreading that crap around uh, and that anti-Asian hatred. Um, doesn't take much. Happens real fast. Uh, so we live it. We live it as individuals. So 
what I, to answer your question, Katie, the, the uh, and remarkable support, I mean, more than three quarters of the vote, this was a community really behind that, me, I think. And it says a lot about the community that they want, they want diversity. Now, we're not tokens. Please don't look at us that way. Um, I'm glad we're both there to represent, we can see it, but it's more than just having and checking a box. We've got an Asian now, we've got an African-American black woman now. We got, you know, she gets two, you know, she gets to be a woman and a woman. <laughs> but um, uh, uh, that's, that's a good step, but you have to use the lens of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And that's got to be, they're doing it to the city. Give the city credit for that, but it shouldn't just be a checkbox either. I mean, it should be really something that people, oh, I never knew I was that way. Right. Um, and then and then when you have that opportunity, um, the best thing I would say to change all racism in America, well, not all, because some are just hardened, mm -hmm. is to spend uh, some time in a nation that you are not the minority, you are not the majority, and you don't speak that language, a totally different culture. You know, go to Japan mm -hmm. and stay there for six months. Just we plopped you in there. You got to figure out how to do this. You're now a temporary immigrant. How are you going to How are you going to deal with this country? The difference is, you know, you get to come home. You know, you're, you're, you're six months there. They're going to be different. I mean, but you get to come home. That's how immigrants are. That's how people of color. Are in this country and and we're only four piece we're only in four categories you're either indigenous you are enslaved you're an immigrant or a refugee there's only four categories of americans <laughs> and you have to figure out which one you are mm -hmm. and then that helps define and hopefully that helps define this discussion because mm -hmm. somewhere along the line you got to be one of those categories and those mm -hmm. stories everybody goes to those stories so um that's what I hope. And I hope I can keep telling that. Um, mm -hmm. When I have the opportunity, I will speak out. Um, mm -hmm. I won't do it just because, but when there's that opportunity, of course, of course I'll speak out. And I think the community would yes. allow me to do that. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Clarence. Brenda? Uh, yeah, I, you know, the question that you asked, it, it, is what had surprised me on election night that I had as much support as I did. The numbers were really telling that uh, Bainbridge Island uh, welcomed me as a council person. And I knew they welcomed me as me, <laughs> right? <laughs> but to be on the council, that was a whole different um, feeling. And, you know, how do I, how do I feel supported? Well, I'll tell you, I, I was over in Kingston the other day at the Safeway. <laughs> and a guy grabbed my arm and he said, hey, Brenda. And it, it really startled me because I didn't expect anyone in Kingston to know me. And he said, I voted for you. <laughs> and, and it's, it's, it was startling too. He had a mask on. I mean, I think he's going to come get me, you know, and, <laughs> and he was just supporting me, you know, and I, I get that so often that it's, um, you know, it's, I, I used to always get recognized because this, this does not wash off, right? I, I look like this every day, all day, and people recognize me now, and I think they recognized me before all of the different groups that I was involved in, but now it's a different level. Um, I've always felt supported here on Bainbridge, but what, what I see you're asking is, does that support continue when it comes to policies and, and politics and things that are hard for us to do as a city? Does that support, um, does it include everybody, you know? Um, it's, there's one thing to say that, yeah, we, we need more affordable housing on Bainbridge. But there's another to say, well, what, but who, who do we want living there? You know what I mean? It's like, we want it to be affordable for the right kind of affordable, low-income kind of people. It's like, no, no. Well, we, we, we can't, you know we have to make it affordable for everybody. 
And um, the support that I would like to see is that when those hard issues come up, that Bainbridge Island is paying attention because sometimes they're subversive. They're they're so they're under so much policy that you know Bainbridge doesn't even know what's happening. I, I said it myself. It took me ten years before I got involved, and I mean the involvement has to be. Uh, you have to really be listening and paying attention to what the council is doing. It's not that it's, you know, we're trying to hide anything, but it's so much and it has such a big impact that if you're not looking, something will happen and you'll find out days later in the paper and you say, why, why did they do that stupid stuff? You know, by then it's too late. You have to pay attention as it's coming along and as we're doing things. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's why I got involved because I, I got tired of hearing myself say, well, wait a minute, they're, they're doing what? <laughs> a roundabout, that's when I really got involved. I'm like, it's in my backyard, people. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about the, who do I talk to, you know? And of course I talked to Cole and, and, and he really did try to make me understand what was happening. And that's what I'm trying to be for anybody who's, you know, who reads about something, who do I talk to? Well, I, you talk to me, I can tell you what I know and try to help you to understand what, what the city has decided to do. But there's a lot of things that you can be on the front end of if you're just paying attention. And when, when we vote a certain way, we think we're voting or what the community wants. If we don't hear from the community, you know, we're we're voting what what we think we want. And I'd rather vote for what the people want instead of my own um, my own opinions. So mm -hmm. write, call, <laughs> and come to the to the meetings so you know what's going on in, in the city. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. I it's like um uh, it's like the vote is for, uh, um, is for the, there's a lot of support for uh, each of you one, like such, like, I, I'll just say the landslide thing, you know, uh, but it's the voters that voted that need to now listen and tune into, you know, um, the city council stuff, or if it's like, well, who can I turn to? That's why we have these uh, um, these programs is because I want people to see you as their neighbors <laughs> that they can turn to, and um, everybody that we host. That's what I'm, you know, what I'm hoping for. So, you know, I really, really appreciate that. I, um, hey, I want. Can I, uh, yeah. Segue on uh, something. Brenda said, because I, I relate that topic about representing the community. I, I also said this last night in my, uh, at the city council meeting, you know, I said, uh, I'm paraphrasing Albert Einstein, but he said, um, when you're riding a bicycle and you want to keep to keep it moving forward, you have to maintain your balance. Mm -hmm. And I said that we city council members, we're, we're the seven people that, you know, steering this bicycle toward whatever goal we're working on, whatever objective we need for the future of Bainbridge Island. And there are 25,000 people telling us which path to take. And, you know, we've got to balance all of that. We have to, not every path can be taken. We're going to have mm -hmm. to pick one that's going to fit most people's paths. And sometimes someone says, this is the only path to take and are not going to change their minds and the bike falls over. Mm -hmm. And so we all lose. So we got to get back to, you know, being focused and keeping balance. And one of the things that um, I learned at the Tuckwilla City Council was you got to, do as much public outreach as possible. You can do all the best stuff and you still can't get to people. I'll give an example. Um, we would always make brand new sidewalks because we had so much money. Underground utilities, sewer hookups for free, utility hookups for free. And um, we'd put the notice on the end of the block. We'd, we'd actually doorbell every house, say it's coming. We'd have city meetings. And then, you know, it was a six, seven month process. And then the bulldozers show up. And then the next week, next city council meeting, a person shows up and says, nobody told me about this. You know, so some people, it's not necessarily, and I, I mean this for everybody listening, 
you have your lives, you're busy. And, and especially younger families, you know, they barely have enough time to, you know, uh, sleep. So paying attention to city business is not necessarily high on their priorities. So the balance we have, it's one of those people who, um, they're, they're folks on the bike, the folks on the bike who are really focusing on something else. They really aren't caring about where the bike's going because they have their own agenda or their own lives. But we still have to consider what point of view they might have. And because we want us, we do represent 25,000 people. So that's the trick. That's the, that's mm -hmm. the real balancing act of being in public service. Is So I guess what I'm, I'm hearing from you is, and you know, if it, it, that it doesn't matter if you agree or not, still, if you're wondering about it, reach out, you know, right. both ways. And I'm also thinking, and maybe if we have a community event, we shouldn't do it during city council meetings <laughs> so that you all can come along as, as Bainbridge Islanders. So well, we have to be careful. We can't have four, more than four at a time, or that's a quorum. You know? That quorum thing really confuses me. <laughs> it's, it's, it's law. Oh. <laughs> so um, I was just wanting to let folks know um, that, you know, we just have another five or 10 minutes. And um, if, anybody um, has a question you could um, like maybe if people know zoom to raise your hand or something like that or put it in the chat um, we may be able to take some questions and um, I just wanted to know is there something that I didn't ask you that you did want to mention about just your personality and who you are so I'll, I'll start with um, Brenda, is there anything that you wanted to Well, say? I think probably everybody um, who's seen me at the Senior Center know this, but I love knitting. <laughs> and I love to try to get there whenever I can for the knitting. Um, it's it's uh, more than a pastime. It's more than a hobby. It's taken over. It's, it's what I do to relax, you know. Um, and, you know, if you have anybody who got any little babies, I will make stuff for them. Just let me know. <laughs> Thanks. I love knowing that about you. That's great. <laughs> okay. Um, I see that Rita has a question. Um, Clarence, should we ask Rita her question first? Or do you well, want to? Real quick thing, because this is a twofer. Brenda okay. and I had a wonderful lunch a while back, and we really had something in common. We're both sci-fi geeks. And there is, especially Star Trek. So, uh, you know, be careful. Live long and prosper, folks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. That's a great addition. So, um, Rita, would you like to? Un yeah. I wasn't going to ask a question, but I was going to say I'm, I'm just thrilled that Brenda is going to be a representative to the Senior Center. If there's anything I can do to help you, let me know. Um, and so, it's, and it's just great on these forums. I watch the city council meeting every week that it's on. And um, it's it's great to be able to kind of see what's going on. Um, and then knowing that we have people that we can contact. So um, it's just, I'm really happy about that. And thank you both for running. And um, we'll see good things, I know, from both of you. Thank you. Thanks, Rita. Thanks, Rita. Sheila. Can you let us know, um, uh, those of us uh, who want to know and those who, all of us who want to know, uh, when and how do we get on so we can see the council meetings on our little TV screen? Well, um, you can go to the city website. You can sign up for it too. They'll send you a notice every week. But on the city website, you scroll down where it says agendas and then you go to the bottom note, you'll see the week, you see every week where, the, you know, the upcoming weeks, uh, there's meetings and click on that. And the agenda has the Zoom link right in it. So uh, you can tune in, um, you know, that evening. Uh, but if you really are interested, please go to the website and sign up to get the notices. You can sign up for any notice, planning commission meeting, salary commission, you know, uh, anything on the city that the city does, uh, utility advisory committee, and they'll give you an instant hit of this meeting's coming up. Here's the link, so you'll you'll have it, you know, reminding you every week. So if you're really interested, please please do that. Thank you, Clarence, my friend. <laughs> 
So um, if nobody has a question, I have a little follow-up story that I want to tell. I hope it's okay. But um, so uh, I got an email after I sent out, you know, um, this uh, program information to folks. And it was an email from John Quitzland. And he goes, great, new, the new council members. <laughs> And he's like, okay, where do I, where do you need me? What do you, you know, what is it about? Da, 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 da. And so I was explaining to him, I, it was, I just like, my face turns red, you know, I was like, okay, um, well, I was really thinking about this, uh, the dynamic, you know, of um, coming onto the island, being an islander, and then being people of color who are being, you know, um, uh, voted in, and then to have this landslide because you know John John had a tough little uh, fight there with Kent Scott and stuff so I was wondering John I just want to acknowledge you and to say it's great to see you and congratulations to all three of you and um, we, we definitely need to do some more programs <laughs> just comment I've I've enjoyed many programs that you've uh, managed Katie this is the very best of all it, I've, it's been wonderful hearing from both Brenda and Clarence speaking so well it was such an effort and I've learned things and uh, I'm proud to be part of this this council um, councils come and go and some are productive some are are uh, dealing with things that they don't manage to, to, to deal with uh, productively and so on. We've got a we've got a lot to do, and I think we're going to be um, making some marks and, and achieving things. Um, if I have another an opportunity some other time to talk about uh, my motivation and and uh, my connections with the island, I'll I'll be happy to to show up. Um, but uh, I didn't belong in this conversation uh, for a number of number of reasons. They they had so much to share, and it's been a wonderful hour for all of us, I believe. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, uh, thank you, my friend and colleague. Uh, and uh, you you are in a different place because you're a legacy family on the island. And you're part of the family. When I first moved here, when I asked for a phone number, they only uh, they only get four digits. So uh, <laughs> you're part of that. You're part of that 842 Elite Club. I, you know. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy, you were going to comment. Uh, yeah, I I have lived here uh, now. It's 17 years. And I have never ever been inspired to have anything personal to do with the city council ever, uh, but I am now. So I'm delighted to know uh, the access point and how to do it and how to get it sent to me. And um, I'm excited to have you all on board. Thank you very much for being who you are and for being elected. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Yeah, um, and I guess uh, Clarence, I don't know if we were on or if it was before everybody got there, but like um, Brenda is a liaison to the senior center. You mentioned that you're a liaison to the Suquamish tribe. Mm -hmm. it's kind of nice to know, you know, who's the liaison to what different community groups. And so, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that we just decided to, those last night. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I think they're gonna um, send us the finalized list, mm -hmm. and we can share that. I'm sure it's a public document. I'll check yeah. that yeah. <laughs> to make sure. Yeah. But there's many committee, and, and that's what uh, was interesting to me when I first got on is we do more work than just city council work. There's various committees and boards and commissions that we're on also. Mm. Reed, I'll call on you. Yeah, I would like to thank you all. One of the wonderful things about this conversation today was 
the opportunity to have a conversation that wasn't focused specifically around um, an issue or a challenge that kind of is divisive, but to get to know each other as individuals, which really does sort of hearken to that small town spirit anyway, even if the island is almost 30,000 people uh, that Brenda, you were talking about at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would like to just reiterate that if there are topics or issues, I think of the Senior Community Center as a um, meeting place. It was part of the building was originally designed as a commons. And I think that we still carry that on um, as the tenant here. And so if there are um, issues of community import and now with the beauty of internet connection, I think we can have those discussions um, through the senior center in so far as anybody's interested in that. So don't anybody hesitate to um, reach out and say, we should have a conversation about that. Great, great. I look at the senior center as a hub. So, you know, that's, that's the way it should be. Well, I just want to thank all of um, all, all of you for being here. Thanks so much. And, and it was such an honor and really delightful. Thank you, Clarence and Brenda.